Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to integrate 3D objects into live footage using Element 3D version 2. So in the, in the description there is a link where you can download the footage and the environment map that I created for this. Um, but I would encourage you to go and shoot your own footage just so you can. I actually just use my iPhone so it's nothing really fancy. Then I use a program called Photosynth. It's made by Microsoft and I use this to create an environment map that I'm using to light the scene. And so you can get it for, I think they're for Android and iOS, um, just a smartphone. So I took the smartphone and I just took pictures. I went around in circles right where I uh, filmed right here and went around in circles and we created this environment map. And the environment map ended up looking like, like this. So I can use this now to light any of my 3D objects using Element 3D and the physical shader. So let's start with a brand new composition, 1920 by 1080. Let's find my footage. Let's bring it in here. I'm going to take it from a different spot in the footage. Okay, there's what I want. I'm going to just go ahead and pre-compose this and move all the attributes. We'll call this footage. Okay, now let's go in and track this footage. Let's come in to the window, down to tracker, make sure that's checked on. I already have it up over here. I'm going to hit track camera. And this is going to track the camera and I can create a camera inside After Effects that will follow along virtually with the camera movement. That's pretty cool. Okay, the analyzing done now, which is solving for the camera. Okay, and we're done. And what you'll see here is all these little dots everywhere. And as I move the playhead around, those dots should be pretty well secured to, to the footage. And then what I want to do is I want to hit this Create Camera button. And now I've got a 3D camera down here. I also want to find a place in my footage where I want to put my 3D object. And so if I just take, see like a plane right here, if I highlight over three of these dots, and I can right click and it'll create like a null. And there's a null right there and it's oriented to that plane and it's, it's right there in actual 3D space. And I'm going to use this to attach to my my object I'm creating with Element 3D. So next step is to bring in Element 3D. So let's bring a new solid, call it E3D, go to Effects, Video Copilot, Element, and let's just grab one of the objects, built-in objects. Okay. And there it is way over there. Um, but what if I do, if I go to Group, and right here where it says Create Group Null, on the Group 1, because that's the where the object is. I'm going to create that and it creates a, a group one null and I also have this track null. And so if I grab the position, I'm going to copy the position from the track null and then paste it onto the group. And then it brings it right there. You can see it's not at all the right size. And also the orientation. And then let's take that group null. This is for the element group. And I'm going to scale that up. And it looks like it's laying on its side. So let's bring the X rotation to 90. And that looks like to be there in the right spot pretty good. And I don't think I want it right on the edge. So let's just grab that group null. Let's move it, maybe move it down this way towards the camera. OK. So there's the track, and that looks pretty good. but. It doesn't look like it really meshes into the environment very well. So there's two things I'm going to do. I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. This is in the shadows here. So I'm just going to add some ambient occlusion to kind of make it so it lands on the ground. You can It feels like it's on the ground. And also I'm going to use this environment map that I created to light this. And you'll see the difference right away of, of how this will mesh better into the environment. Let's go to the Element 3D. Let's go into the scene setup. Now all I have to do is click up here on environment and then browse and find my file. Select that texture, bring it in. Now it is larger than it likes so it automatically brings it down. Click OK and you can see in the reflection that environment. Pretty cool. So let's go back into our main comp. 
And you can see now that's starting to fit the environment better. Let's also go down into the render settings. This is an element 3D into ambient occlusion. Turn that on. And it didn't do the bottom because we need to put in a ground plane. So let's go into the scene setup. I'm going to create just a plane. And then let's grab my scale tool and scale it up nice and big. And then I'm going to go to my materials and just make that a matte shadow on that plane. And then you can see there's begin to be a little bit of ambient occlusion, but we can scale that up. We can crank that. Now you can see there. I might want to come in to this ground plane and move it up a tiny bit. There we go. And that's looking like it, it fits in there pretty well. Now that we have this set up, we can put anything there. It doesn't have to be this. Let's let's bring in some text. So I'm just going to type. You know, let's do something smaller. Nice and bold. And I can go ahead and just even hide this now. Let's go to the Element 3D layer. Come to the Custom Layers. Set that to that text layer. Let's go into the Scene Setup. I'm going to go ahead and just hide that trophy model. Leave that plain model there, though and then extrude. Let's bring this up so it rests right on that plane. Okay, now that I look at this, it looks like it might be tipping back a little bit. So I can come to this group null and change the orientation. Kind of make it fit how we want. Okay, now if we wanted to, we can make this chrome and then it's gonna really show the environment. Let's go back into the scene setup, find some basic materials, and let's make that chrome. Now what we what happened here is it's not looking quite right. And what I want to show you is in this render settings in the we go to physical environment. And this is where it's going to show what we're reflecting. And it doesn't look right because it's not lined up quite right. So if I show the physical environment, then I can come in and I can rotate this around. Until it, it kind of looks the way I want it to. And that's close enough. Let's go back into the scene setup. I'm going to go into that extrusion, extrusion model. Go into the chrome. And then let's, under the basic settings, let's bring down the glossiness a little bit. just so it's not so mirrored. There we go. I'm liking that. So now what are we going to do to make this kind of mesh in there a little bit more? Um, we did the environment map, and that's good, but there's some other little techniques you can do to make um, a 3D render kind of fit in here a little bit better. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-compose all of these layers except for the footage because I want to create a light wrap. So let's take the footage, duplicate that, bring it on top, Give it a name, light wrap. And then what I'm going to do is go to my effects, channel, set mat, set that map to the 3D layer. And if we solo that, you can see what it's doing. I'm going to duplicate that, invert the second one, and then let's go to the effects, blur, let's add a channel blur, stick it in between the two. Let's blur, blur the alpha. It looks like I'm Got this wrong way. So I'm going to invert the first one and then uninvert the second one. There we go. It's kind of blurring in. And let's take a look at that. Now that's kind of a very heavy looking light wrap. And what I need to do is also blur, pre blur everything. So let's go add to the effects, go to blur, add a fast blur. And I'm going to set this up above the set mat. Bring that up. About 100 looks pretty good. And then if I just take this light wrap, I can bring down the opacity. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now other things we can do, let's add a new adjustment layer. And in this adjustment layer, if you do an overall color correction, then it's going to make everything feel better. If you do something else like, um, let's go to stylize and let's add a glow. And it kind of makes everything kind of mesh together because it's all gonna be affected equally. Let's bring the glow radius up. Let's 
just kind of a light glow on everything. And it kind of really just ties everything together because everything is glowing. Let's add a color correction. Just curves. And just add a little bit of a color correction, maybe we can add a little bit of contrast to it. And I think that's looking pretty good. You can add some grain. I'm not going to add some grain, but adding grain will actually also kind of mesh all this together, make it look like it's all in the same scene. Um, and there you go. So you can put in any object you want. Now, the tricks I did here was using that photo synth by Microsoft, and I created my own environment map. And because of that, it really did most of the work of making this uh, coloring correct in order to make it look like it met, met with the scene. The other thing is just make sure you use the camera tracker. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Put them down in the comments below. Um, try this out. Again, I encourage you to use your own footage, but if you don't have your own footage, you can download what I used as well. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.